In this video, I'll be examining the reverse foot mode. I will not be looking at the reverse foot solver itself. I'll just be looking at the main reverse foot mode. I have a basic scene set up here. I'm importing the character through an FBX file. This is a very basic skeleton setup, and it's a character setup which I set up within Houdini. So this will contain a weighted mesh and a default skeleton position. There is not really any animation stored within this FBX. It's basically the default pose. I'm isolating the output with three nulls here. The first will show my mesh, and if we look at the geometry spreadsheet, we should be able to see that we have all the bone capture weights attached to this mesh. The next two outputs are my skeleton and my animation. Both of these are essentially default poses. I can use these points to set a bone deform node. We'll need a mesh in the first port, the skeleton in the second port, and the animation in the third port. And I'll get a rig pose node, and we'll connect this to the third port. This will allow us to manipulate the rig. So there's nothing really special about this. This is a very basic setup. I should be able to directly manipulate the joints in order to deform the rig. Next we'll look at the node which we're going to be examining. This will be under the KineFX drop down menu, and the node is called Reverse Foot. This node is a wrapper around a VOP solver, so it will create an interface for using that solver. To see that solver, I'll get a rig attribute VOP. I will enter this node. The solver itself will be under the drop down menu within this network, and it will also be called Reverse Foot. This solver is what is driven by the Reverse Foot node. We can drive this solver separately. Doing this will give you a lot more control than using the built-in node. However, this is not something which I'm going to be covering. There are two main solvers like this, which are built into KineFX. There is the reverse foot. This has a default implementation, which is created as a SOP node. The other main joint in this regard is the realistic shoulder. This, however, is only available as the solver. These solvers are primarily used for driving motion capture. They can also be used for rigging. In terms of rigging, I would refer to these nodes as lowest common denominator nodes. This is not meant to be a slight on them, however, it describes their intended purpose. The reverse foot node is designed to give you the base functionality for a reverse foot, and it is designed to work consistently with motion capture. It is not designed to do anything complex or special. It does what it needs to very well. If you wanted to extend its functionality, I would actually settle with using the actual solver itself. However, in a lot of cases where you want more complex functionality, it's better to build your own rigging systems. For motion capture, or very quick basic rigging, where you do not have either the time nor the need to build complex rigging systems, this node is an ideal solution. So this will do every single thing that you need to do for the most common case of a reverse foot, but it will not go beyond that. So now we can look at how we'll actually use this. The most important thing to know with a control like this is that it is not used to drive the rig. This will be used to drive the controls. With KineFX, we essentially have three types of geometry. We will have the mesh, and the mesh will be driven by our skeleton. The skeleton itself will be driven by solvers, and these solvers will constitute the rig. However, these solvers are not calculated off the rig itself most of the time. Instead, they'll be calculated off a separate piece of geometry, which will be used to create the controls. And these controls will need to be manipulated in order to manipulate the rig. So essentially, we're creating two rigs, one which will affect the controls. These controls will then be used to modify a second rig, which will control the skeleton itself. The first input of this node will take our geometry, and this will be connected to my animation branch. This branch is what I will use for my controls. Then there are a couple of things which we can set with regard to this node. The very first option in this node is a mode option. There are three modes. The first is actually a combination of the second two. We can either use this node to create attributes to drive our rig, so we can define attributes for the reverse foot. These will be cached in a config attribute. By default, this will be called reverse foot config. And we can use these to drive the solver. This will allow us to simplify our network. It will also simplify the node interactions, which does mean this will be a more performant option. I will not be doing this. I'll be creating the attributes in this network. I'll also be using them within this network. Since I'm going to be dealing with this in a single network, I'll start by doing both of these at the same time. I'm not going to be working with any of the mirroring options. I'm also going to specify that I'm going to keep the markers. I am going to perform a very basic minimal setup with this node. To start with, I'm going to need a reference to the pelvis. In this case, I've stored it in a joint called hips. This joint will be the parent of my leg nodes. 
This is not strictly required, but this node does not work well if you do not select a pelvis. After this, we'll have the entries for the controls for the leg. This node will allow for multiple entries and will allow us to work with multiple legs. In this case, I'll only be setting up a single leg, and I'll start by getting my thigh. We'll not really use the thigh joint as a control, but it is required for the IK solver, so we will keep it here. Next, we'll have our knee joint. In the IK solver, we'll use the knee joint to specify the plane of the leg. We could think of this either as a twist control or as an up vector for the leg. This will be followed by our ankle. This will be used to control the position of the leg in the IK. This is essentially the end point of our leg. In rigging terms, this is the effector of the leg. The next joint will be the ball joint of the foot. Essentially, this is the joint which will control the toes of the foot. Technically, this is the last joint of my leg, and this is actually the last joint that we need for any deformation. We can, however, specify an effector at the end of the toe, and the effector would be the last joint within the solver. In my case, I do not have the toe effector. That is because it is a joint which is not strictly necessary for animation and it is not a joint which I plan to have any children attached to. The reverse foot node does not need the toe to be specified explicitly. However, if the toe is not a joint in the rig, we will need to specify its position within the parameters. This is part of what we store in our config. I will lower the marker scale so we can position them more easily. Below where we set our joints, we have a number of options for placing these joints. There are also options for animation here. Which menus we see here will depend on the mode which we are using. The offset markers menu will be used to configure our markers. The markers will be the positions around which our foots will pivot. These are limited to movement in the X and the Z axis. All of our joints will share the same Y axis, and this can be manipulated using the marker up offset. Positioning these markers can be time consuming, and we do not actually need to do this. If we have weighted input geometry and a skeleton, we can use those to configure this node instead. That is the option which I'm going to take. The second input for our reverse foot node is called rest geometry. This refers to our weighted mesh, but it refers to it in the rest position. This is a position where it has no deformation. The third input refers to the capture skeleton. This is a skeleton which has all the inputs required for our bone capture attribute on the geometry. Essentially, we need the skeleton which we use to generate the weights for this rig although technically any skeleton with identical naming should work. So I can connect my skeleton to the third input. I'll connect my rest geometry to the second input. And this should calculate positions of my markers based off my actual geometry. This will not give an ideal result, but it is a result which we can tweak more easily. The marker representation can be scaled down a little bit more, and I'll offset my marker a little bit in Y so that it matches the geometry a little bit more closely. We should now have our basic controls for the leg, and this control setup can be used to drive our foot. There are a couple of ways which we can use this setup. There are sliders which we can use to roll the foot. We can also activate the viewer state for this node by pressing enter in the viewport, and this will allow us to manipulate the foot controls directly. We also have sliders which we can use to manipulate each of the joints individually. This will give us our basic set of controls, and we can use this control set to drive our rig. In this case, I want to create a basic IK setup. Before I do that, however, I want to make these a bit more functional as controls. I'll start by getting a parent joints node. I will also need a rig pose node. I will connect the rig pose to the solver. We should now be able to use this to control the positions of our leg and foot. However, currently I do not like the setup. Currently, when I move the knee, I'm moving the ankle as well. The knee should move independently of the foot, and it should only affect the plane of the leg. The ankle is what's going to be used to drive the position of the leg. One thing to note is we will get different results if we use the pose node before or after the leg. We could use our pose node before the leg and have this drive our joint positions before we calculate the foot. A third option for the rig pose is to configure our joints before the rig pose. We could then have a second reverse foot node after our rig pose. This reverse foot node will be used explicitly to drive our animation. So this first node will be used to set up our config. This is a detail attribute, and we can examine it in the geometry spreadsheet. As stated earlier, we could actually store this as part of the geometry. The second node could then be set to solve reverse foot, and this would be used to manipulate the solver.
However, I do not like the way this interacts. I prefer to have the rig posed before these solvers. That is because I know this will give us a correct setup for the foot. It also makes sure that we are manipulating the ankle before the foot is updated, so it should give us a correct setup for the leg as well. So next I'll use my parenting node, and I'll add this before the rig pose node. In this case I'll be updating the leg with two parenting operations. The joints that I'm going to change the parenting of are going to be the knee and the ankle. For this rig, my controls have a root, and that will essentially be the parent of all of the controls. I'm going to make these joints a child of that. If I did not have a specific root joint, I would parent these to the seam root. Separating the hierarchy like this means that our knee can be transformed without affecting the ankle. This will give us a much better control for our IK setup. So essentially the structure which I have now is I've reparented the joints. This will be followed by the ability to pose the joints. After this, I'm configuring the reverse foot joints. And then I'm applying the solver for the reverse foot joints. We could of course do these at the same time, but for manipulation purposes, it is actually easier to separate them. So we have our control set up. Next, we'll want our solvers. To create these, I'm going to use a rig attribute VOP. The rig attribute VOP should be setting my skeleton. So the skeleton should connect to the first input. In this case, I've connected the wrong input. This should be the skeleton and not the mesh. The second input will be set by our controls. For the leg setup, I'm actually going to need two solvers. One is going to be for the IK. The second one is going to update the position and the rotation of the foot. I'll correct this to have the skeleton input, and then we can work on the solvers. So normally here, I would construct the IK solver specifically, but there is another option which we can use to create the IK solver, which gives less control, but is more straightforward. And that would be to use the IK chains node. This is a two bone IK solver. There are actually two IK solvers within KineFX, and this is built off the more simple one but this will give you a way to quickly set up an IK leg. I'll attach this instead of my first VOP. The first input will be set by my skeleton, and the second will be set by my controls. The output will connect to my second VOP. I'll add an IK solve, and the first three fields will be set by our first input. That's going to be the skeleton which we are driving. We'll need the root of the chain. In this case, that will be my thigh. We'll then need the middle joint, which will be my knee and we'll need the tip joint, which will be my ankle. The next set of controls will come from the second input, and these are being driven by my controls. The first of these will be used to set the plane of the leg, and that will be set by my knee. The joint names here are the same. This is something which I prefer. Here I track my geometry using the network, rather than the specific naming. However, the names for the controls do not need to be the same as the names for the skeleton. My second control from the second input will be my ankle. We should now have IK controls for our leg. However, our foot is not following with the IK controls. That is something which we will want to fix. We do, however, have working controls for our reverse foot rig. So we do have our reverse foot working. It's working for the IK. Next, we'll want to make it work for the foot as well. For the foot, we have two joints that we'll need to drive. We'll need to drive the ankle. We will also need to drive the toe. We're going to be doing this in the VOP node. This is the node connected after the IK solver. I'll enter this node and I'll get a get point transforms function. This is an operation where we can set multiple transforms at the same time. I will also want a set point transforms node, and this is what will update the final rig. The get point transforms node is going to get information from the second branch of our network. That's the input connected to the second input, which is creating our controls. The set point transforms node is going to set the data on our skeleton. This node will always set geometry connected to the first input. Once again, in this case, the names will be identical, but if you have different names for your control and your skeleton, those are the names which will be appropriate. I'll set the get point transforms node. This is going to be set with a group. I'll create this group using the name attribute. The first joint will be my ankle, and I'll set this with at name is equal to left ankle. This will be followed by at name is equal to left foot, and this will be setting my foot control. Since in my case the names are going to be the same, I can just copy this and I'll paste it into the set point transforms node. The main thing to take note of here is we want to keep our joints consistent, so the namings for the joints in the controls need to match up correctly with the naming for the joints for the skeleton. For the get point transforms node, I need to specify that this is coming in from the second input. 
I will then use the transforms from the get point transform node, and I'll use these to update the transforms in the set point transform node. This should complete our solver, however, we will not necessarily see our updates in the viewport. I'll return to the main rig network, and I'm going to place a null after my solvers. By doing this, I know that I'm going to get the results of the solver. We should now see that the bone for the foot is updating according to the controls. This should now match our reverse foot, and this should be working correctly with our IK solver. The result of this can now be used to drive the deformation in our bone deform node. We have now completed the animation branch for the leg. This is going to be used to drive our skeleton, and in turn this is going to be used to deform our mesh. I should now be able to use my reverse solver to drive the foot, and this should also work in concert with IK controls for the leg.